let's come back now to to our uh, output stage it's in the let's look a little bit at uh, the problems that can appear with this kind of structure well the first problem is that as you can imagine in the case of a mirror uh, the currents will be equal only if the voltage on the source gate and drain are equal on both sides that's why we prefer to have cascodes because the cascode is forcing this voltage to be equal with this one or let's say to be more correct this one to be equal with this one so the drains will be equal in our case uh, is more complicated uh, as you can see here this drain can never match this one in the same way the drain voltage from here will never match the voltage from here the source is yes because we can match them as you can imagine, if you know the size, you know the bias in current, then the VGS can have only one value. So the VGS can be equal, at least in the typical operating point. But uh, as you can imagine, it will vary a lot with the, with the signal. Now, um, the fact that these voltages will vary, especially the, the drain voltage, on the output stage because it's the output so of course it will vary a lot uh, makes that the quiescent current is not actually not constant and uh, the worst part is that uh, is varying in a different way on the NMOS and also on the PINMOS but also is varying with the signal and this is quite important because um, by default we want to eliminate any impact of the signal itself on the operating point of the op pump we did the same thing on the input stage. We have to do the same thing here. And um, just to visualize what is the, um, the effect, let's make here a plot. Usually what you obtain is something like this. So if you look at the quiescent current that we have with this kind of structure, and you look at the, um, at the current that flows through the NMOS and the PMOS, you will get something like, for example, something like this. And here on the x-axis we have 0 and VDD. And here is the quiescent current on the P side and quiescent current on the N side. These two currents. A quiescent P, I quiescent N. Um, and why is happening like that? First of all, uh, we will have equal currents only if we match the circuitry, so that really we size this, uh, all these transistors in such a way that they are equal. IQP with I quiescent on the N side. But this can happen at only one single point. And usually PMOS, IQP, is varying much more than the NMOS transistor, usually, but yeah, sometimes they are equal, sometimes they are matching, I mean the, the delta, the, the increase versus the supply is much bigger. Um, this makes that um, even if we shift this plot down to here, let's say, if we shift everything down by sizing the transistors, Still, we will have something like this, maybe. So they will be equal only at a certain point. After that, we will have always a current that is too high on the P side or too low on the P side and vice versa on the N side. And this makes that we create an extra error. And this error, as you can imagine, is depending on the signal because this is our signal between zero and VDD. And this is an extra error that we, we introduce, so it's not nice to do it. But uh, let's find a clever way to solve this problem. And uh, the clever way is actually quite easy, if we look carefully at the, the schematic. As I said initially, we will have always the same currency if we have always the same voltages. Which means that we will have somehow to look where is the weakest point in this VGS copy structure. 
and uh, actually the weakest point is here on the output because on the output the length is minimum and as you probably remember from the score if the length is the minimum then the variation of the VGS with the VDS is the highest and for this reason first of all it's preferably to use uh, not minimum size for these transistors and let's put some labels here M3 and M4 so M1, 3 and 4 should have L that is not minimum let's consider that is 2-3 times uh, bigger than the minimum size of the technology but for the output we are forced to make uh, the L uh, as low as possible especially for the um, area efficiency because we don't want to consume too much area and uh, also for the bandwidth okay there are also other parameters but uh, these are the most important ones um, for this reason we should make it in such a way that the M4 is having the same parameters like MN I mean the same voltages on the gate source and drain and M3 should match also M1 uh, the VGS will be all similar in value because uh, you size the biasing current, you size the transistor, so VGS will be almost the same. But uh, for the M4 and MN, but the VDS will not be equal. The drain voltage here is fixed, is equal with VGS, while here is moving with the signal, can be between 0 and VDD. This is one of the problems. The other problem is that here, M3 and M1, they, ha they can have the same or almost the same voltage on the sources, the same voltage on the gate because they are shorted together, but the drain again will not be equal. And uh, here is actually a slightly positive thing. First of all is the fact that if the L is big, the variation with the drain voltage, with the VDS, drain to source voltage, is not that big. Variation of the current, sorry, variation of the VGS with the VDS is not that big. But also the fact that the voltage between the gate of the NMOS and the gate of the PMOS, which is actually the voltage drain to source of the M1, is almost constant for a certain supply, of course. Because here the VDS, this voltage, is supply minus VGS minus another VGS. So it's not varying with the signal, it's almost a constant value. It will, value, it will vary uh, of course with corners, with supply and so on, with temperature, but will not, not vary with the signal. And the variation with the signal is actually the biggest impact. So let's focus now how to improve the, um, the effect that is given by the fact that the drain of the um, the drain of the NMOS output transistor is not equal with M4 and for this um, let's make a new drawing here let's look a little bit at the concept uh, what do we want we want of course to have the same output stage cannot change it and we want to have the same output structure this part will be the same let's now have uh, here um, two um, two NMOSes but this time let's connect them different way if you remember the drawing from the last time the structure from here let's make this one like uh, M3 and M4 um, what do we have here? we have an uh, NMOS with, this, with the current in the, into the source and then another NMOS connected to the ground 
and we want this one and let's put the labels here m n m1 m3 and m4 we want to have the same voltage on the drain of the uh, transistor m4 as it is in the drain of mn of course since uh, the drain of uh, mn transistor is the output it will vary a lot so the only way to, to be the same of course you cannot short it you have to make a kind of loop that is uh, controlling the voltage here to be the same like a kind of uh, buffer or a replica circuitry that is copying the output voltage now um, the gate of the m3 is quite simple we can connect it here it's not that fancy gate of m1 can be connected here let's see what can we place here in the drain of the m4 so that we are copying the output voltage um, the easiest way to copy a voltage without shorting is actually to use a differential uh, input pair as you can imagine input let's make the drawing here uh, an input pair what is doing is having let, let's use a pmos this time if we want to copy a voltage from this side v1 into v2 what we have to do we have to put an input differential pair and create a loop that is controlling um, that is creating um, we have to create a feedback so that we regulate the voltage here to be equal with v2 and the easiest way is actually to build like a buffer to have something like a buffer the simplest buffer is something like this and in this way what we have we have a loop here with differential pair a mirror and since this is the output of the this smaller pump and is connected to the input this is equivalent with having something like this this is v1 v2 so in this way we copied plus and minus we copied v1 into v2 without shorting the signals let's see how can we use this structure so that we copy the voltage from the output net to the drain of m4 and if we look carefully we can take this part and simply connect it here let's make the drawing in one single um, schematic because it will be easier to visualize it here is the m3 with the current source then is m4 these are the two pmoses m3 oh sorry this is m3 m4 let's call it m5 and m6 now we have this structure so whatever voltage we place here it will be copied through here so means the drain of m4 will see the same voltage like the gate of m5 now how to size it as you can imagine since we want to have a differential pair and uh, this loop is broken we have to set uh, sorry um, we have to set the current here so that this is two times the biasing current and this is one time in such a way that we have the same current through m3 and m4 is the same current because this is split in two now let's connect the output stage the output stage is the same like before this part with the current source here 
Vimos like that. This is MN MP output. Now, since I want to have the the um, drain of M4 to be the same with out, means I have to connect this point to the to here. So this will be the out net. M3 should be should match uh, this uh, M1 transistor. In our case, we can connect the gate directly to this point. So what we obtain? We obtain M4 that have that is having the same VGS with the MN. The same VDS, because it's copied by this small buffer. For M3, the VGS is the same, because we know the biasing currents, we know the size of the transistor, so the VGS, we know what will be the value. The VDS here is fixed, equal with VGS, and in this case, is fixed, is depending only on the supply and the VGSs. So, this means that it's not depending on the signal. Which makes that once we set the, this current, this current, this one, and this one, we will know automatically what will, will be the current here. I, Q, N. Quiescent current on the N side. And this structure is for the NMOS. For the PMOS, we can do exactly the same thing, but flipped. So, as you can imagine, here will be another PMOS in parallel. Uh, what to call it? MP1, let's say. Same like M1, doing with exactly the same circuitry in front of it that is doing exactly the same thing, but is flipped. Um, and in this way, if we match the quiescent current of the NMOS and the PMOS, IQP equal with IQN, what do we obtain? We obtain something like this. It's the same like before, the same characteristic. Quiescent current from zero to VDD. This is the voltage here, output signal. And in whatever direction it will go, because of the loop that is copying quite well the drains, voltages in of the M4 and, M and, and MP and whatever will be the name of this transistor from here, will be quite similar. Which means that, of course, we will try to minimize this gap and we will, um, in, in this way, we will have exactly the same quiescent current for all the, for the entire range of the signal. Even if it is varying a little bit, for example, let's say that this delta is varying. Uh, just to give an example, let's say that we have here 25 microamps is varying to, I don't know, 40 microamps. It is still quite okay. Because at least it will not introduce extra errors into the system. Of course, we will want to have smaller variation, maybe 25 to 27 or uh, 30. But uh, at least it's not giving errors that are, that are uh, proportional or let's say that are um, related with the signal.